Good morning. My name is Archdeacon Keith Cartwright, and I'm the Archdeacon of the Southern Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, as well as I serve um, at the parish of St. Agnes in Nassau in Grantstown. And um, I welcome you to these morning devotions. Um, let us pray. Almighty God, we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I would like to use as the scripture for today, uh, for our reflections, if we will turn to St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, um, verses 1 through 13, and it, it goes as follows. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say this, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Please do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. And so I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good things to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Friends, during our Lenten journey, the church asks us to really focus on a number of things. First and foremost, we ought to be repentive. Lent calls us to search deep within ourselves and to ask God to, to, to forgive us of those things that we have done wrong. And then, of course, the church speaks about another three things, prayer, fasting, and alms giving prayer fasting and alms giving today we're going to look at our prayer life prayer is simply talking with god and each of us as anglicans have a wonderful wonderful tradition where we begin our prayers each day with morning prayer and so we talk with god in the morning and then we end our day with evening prayer as we give God the conversation and have that conversation with him as we close our day. But I'd like to suggest to each of us today that perhaps we look at a, a small little format that we can use in our prayer lives. And it's coming from the simple word acts, A, C, T, S. A goes for adoration. And adoration is simply praising God. 
giving God all the praise and the glory. I, I usually start off by, by saying, God, good morning or good evening or whatever. You are an awesome God, a beautiful God, a wonderful God. Or oh, I'll just use the first part of our Mass that we say, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Or I would just say, God is so good. He is so good to me. So we start off with praise, and then we come to the C, which is asking God to forgive us. C meaning confession, confession. And in our confession, we ought to think about those things that came across our minds that we know are wrong. The things that really came into our heads that, that was, was just not right. And so we bring those before God. And then there are things that we say wrong. And, you know, some of us have some choice words sometime. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And so we really need to ask God to forgive us of those things. And then, of course, some of us do some very, very naughty things. And so we really need to ask God to forgive us of the things that we do wrong. And then, you know, we are, you know, we are supposed to, to remember to do certain things, certain things that we ought to do. And then some of us keep putting those things on the back burner. Perhaps maybe it's our prayers that we keep skipping over. Perhaps it's our coming to church or to the stations of the cross. We know we ought to do it, and then we just forget about it or we just put it on the back burner. And so we ask God to forgive us of those things that we ought to have done, which we didn't do. And then, of course, we come to the T. T is thanksgiving. Now, no matter how we may look at all the challenges that we are going through in our lives, there's much, much more to give God thanks for. And so thanksgiving is absolutely essential. Thanking God, asking God to, to, for all the, 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 the saying to God of all the wonderful things that he has done for us. Lord, I thank you for the gift of life. Start with that. I thank you for this day, this opportunity to, 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 to do something special for you. So thanking God for the things he has blessed us with. And then we come to the S. And the S is supplication. Supplication. And that simply means asking. But we start off by asking God to help others first. Maybe you have a friend who is in hospital. Say a little prayer asking God that you may heal, that he may heal her from her illness, or perhaps you may have a, a, a neighbor down the road that is going through a tremendous, tremendous situation. You may ask God to intervene in that situation. So asking God for the things that others need, first of all. And then we don't need to come with a Christmas list when we come to ask God for the things that we need. After all, I tend to to ask people not to, to talk about material things, but the things that build your character, things that, that really build you up. Maybe we need more patience. Perhaps we need to ask God to help us to be more understanding. Or perhaps we have a difficult time expressing ourselves in a particular challenge that we may have, asking God to guide our thoughts and our lips. But whatever it is, it should be the things that we truly need. And so I offer you these little guidelines this morning with the word ACTS. A-C-T-S. Asking God to bless you in your prayer life. Asking God that he will help you to remember that we begin our day with prayer. We end our day with prayer. And using adoration confession, thanksgiving, and supplication as we go through our prayer life. I would like to ask you to pray with me as we look at the, the collect for the third week in Lent. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now we do the special prayer for the first day of Lent. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, have a wonderful day. And please let us remember a part of our Lenten journey is our prayer life. Let us take time to seek God's presence and to be with God in our prayers each day. God bless you.